We are now live. Here we are. Welcome. Hi, guys. Our top story tonight is... The two main contingencies on a buyer contract. Yes. So we're going to talk about contingencies. And what they mean. We had a lot of questions about contingencies, and we tend to explain this a lot, uh, especially to our... Um, first time home buyers or buyers that maybe haven't bought a home in a lot of years, we talk about contingencies. So we thought we'd talk about them with you. Yes, our top two contingencies. The number one contingency is inspection contingency. We're talking about California here. Most of the states usually follow California, so I'm sure this works across the board. Yeah, well, I think most states probably have an inspection con t contingency. The second uh, contingency is financing. And under financing, there's two parts to that, the appraisal contingency and full loan approval contingency. So, which we'll talk about the inspections first? Yes, let's go with inspections okay. first. Yeah, you got to get a loan to buy the property, but let's go with number one, inspection contingency. Yes, how many days do you have to do your inspections? Well, in California, the contract defaults to 17 days to get all your inspections complete. Now, sometimes those conditions get shortened and sometimes they get lengthened. So it just depends on the complexity of the property and the things that are going on. Correct? That's right. Now let's say a seller were to provide a home inspection, a termite inspection. Oh my gosh, the inspection list is almost endless. At time of opening escrow, well it would be very, I don't know, what would you say for them to shorten the, the yeah, they could shorten it. I mean, the whole reason for the 17 days of the inspection time is to do your inspections. So if the seller provides them, I know in Northern California, they provide all those things the, the seller does up front. We do things a little differently here in Southern California, um, but it does shorten that time frame if you already have everything done. Because normally we start with a home inspection. Um, the buyer can do a home inspection. And then if that reveals something that you need a secondary inspection, normally it's plumbing, electrical, heating, chimney, things like that roof that need to be inspected by a professional, um, then we have the days that uh, we can set those secondary inspections up. So that's normally the things when you're doing inspections that need to be looked at on a property. As a general rule, the home inspector is out there to look at all the systems and everything going on, but he's not a plumber, he's not an electrician, he's not a carpenter, he's not an HVAC guy, but he knows a lot about all those things and he can put it together like, oh my gosh, the HVAC system's not operating correctly under normal conditions. So when the home inspector's there, we're going to say that's a normal condition. So you might have to call out an HVAC professional. You might have to call out an electrician. You might have to call out a plumber, roofer, foundation specialist. That It goes on and on and on. But the home inspection gives you a broad brushstroke of what the systems in the house are like. And really, the reason you're doing your inspection is so you as the buyer know what you're buying. Um, the California contract is an as-is contract. Uh, so you are really doing these inspections so you know what, what you're buying. Yeah, it's difficult to walk in a house and look through the walls and know what's happening with the electricity. To look through the walls and know what's happening with the plumbing. To look at an HVAC system and go, oh, that's a good one or not. Uh, but we have all the appropriate professionals in every trade that can come in and get things straightened out in a hurry. That's right. So that's, anyone have any questions about inspections? We are happy to talk about them. We do them all the time. I did one yesterday as a matter of fact. Um, so our second section of contingencies on a purchase contract is financing. Of course, that's the reason that we encourage all of our buyers, whether we are representing the buyer or the seller, get pre-qualified. And what that means is that the lender has You've done your loan application, they've checked your credit, they've checked your documents, your tax returns, your pay stubs to make sure that you are qualified to buy the property. So that's the, how we start with that. Because the way the contract's written, you have three days from acceptance of the contract to get your loan approval done, your loan application done. But of course, we we'll do that way before we get to the contract uh, section. So on the contract, you have 17 days to get your appraisal done and 21 days for final loan approval. So those dates are the boilerplate dates on the California contract. Um, and generally, even now with the crazy crush, uh, we're getting the appraisals done in that time frame, which is great. Um, having some appraisal challenges with the prices moving up fast and not a lot of inventory turning over. 
Um, but that's something you know we deal with every day. So your appraisal uh, is usually ordered by the bank. The bank comes in to determine the value of the property by an independent third party. It does. And like Lisa said, with the market going up leaps and bounds, it seems like almost every single day that it makes a difference that appraisers can't keep up because they're only going to use closed property. Something that's already sold and closed would be a comparable for them to use on the property you're buying. Now, if that happened last month or last year, that's a total different market than the one is today. Right. And then the third, the final loan approval comes after the appraisal gets turned into the lender and they do their final loan uh, checks, as you want to call them, it goes through underwriting, everybody looks at it, seems to us that nobody seems to look at it till day 20 and then it's a fire drill, but that's kind of how it happens, the way things are stacked up, um, but then we get final loan approval, they will call and check um, your employment at the end of the escrow. They will make sure you haven't gone and bought furniture, a car, appliances, anything on your credit. So if you are in the process of buying a home, do not go buy anything or use your credit for anything else when you are in the mortgage process. We have heard some wild stories over the years that buyers get excited and go buy a bunch of things the week before they close and then they can't close because they don't have enough credit line to get their loan done. That's right, the oh loan process goodness. is very thorough. Yes. You're right, hey, I bought a new home, let's go get a lawnmower, some new furniture. You know, I've always wanted that uh, riding lawnmower tractor. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till after it closes to yeah. go do any of that. Hey, Kelly, how are you? And Heather, thanks for watching. We were talking about contingencies, buyer con uh, con contingencies today. Um, so another contingency that could be in the process is the home sale contingency. So you may, as a buyer, need to sell your home first before you can buy a new home. Uh, it's challenging in this market to compete with that, but that, you know, reality is reality. You need the money out of your current home to buy your next home, and that would be called a home sale contingency. And there could be a seller could have a home of choice contingency, too, where they, the seller is trying to find a home to buy before they sell. So there's more than the three we're talking about. Uh, in the process, but the three main ones for a buyer that are in usually in every contract are inspection, appraisal, and final loan approval. Yeah, that's why we've looked, lumped it into two categories, just the loan and the inspection, but uh, the, the, the appraisal and loan category is category A and B. Yep. Is that what you would say? That's hey, it. That, that's terrific. Yep. Anything else you want to talk about current events? I want to talk about the question of the day. Okay, what is the question of the day, sir? <laughs> question of the day, what do you do when an appraisal comes in low? What do you do? What are your options? Oh, you've got three options. And what are those three options? Uh, option A, the buyer can always pay the difference between what it appraised for and the contract price, what they're in escrow for. Yep. What would B be? B, B, the, B, seller, B? the seller could come down to appraise price. That could happen. And what generally happens? What's the third thing? Well, where the buyer and seller could negotiate in between. That's right. That's normally, um, normally they don't come in usually too far of a spread. And so the buyer and the seller can negotiate again uh, and come up with a price that both sides are happy with. So the question of the day is you've got three options, basically. Yep. So that's, that's tremendous, terrific. Yep. Hey Aaron, how are you? Thanks for watching. We're just talking about contingencies and I have a little bit of news um, just about that I thought one thing that was interesting on this last week's uh, real estate news was first time home buyers, this is nationally in the market, this is from the economist at realtor.com, 50% uh, of the first time home buyers that are in the market are getting help from their family to get into a home, but they are hot in the market right now, so uh, that's great to hear. It is wonderful. I think families have figured out, hey, if we help them with a home, uh, their siblings or their children or grandchildren, that, that their money's pretty safe right there. Yeah. So it totally makes sense for them to help out. Yep. I just thought that was a cool stat. Okay. Terrific, guys. Thanks for watching. We are love to bring you real estate news. If you're thinking about buying or selling property, we love to talk about real estate. And you can always find us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Terrific.